Thank you for your purchase of a U-Harvest data management system. In this video, we will demonstrate how to connect a tablet to a U-Harvest system's Wi-Fi connection and also how to set up a U-Harvest system from a tablet. If you have not done so, please go to uharvest.net and select the registration tab to register your U-Harvest. By doing this, you will receive notification when software updates or service bulletins are available. Before we begin, ensure you have read the manual and the uHarvest components are properly connected. Once we have verified that all components are connected properly, we can proceed by turning the power on to the processor, which is the black box with an antenna in the cab. A light will shine on the processor, verifying we have power. When the power is first turned on to the processor, the light will turn yellow. After about 30 seconds, the light will turn blue. This means that the Wi-Fi signal is being sent out and we are ready to connect with a tablet. On the tablet, please find the settings icon and press it. Go to your Wi-Fi networks and find the network for uHarvest. It will read uHarvest dash your processor ID number. This is unique to your processor only. For example, the processor we are using is uHarvest-D802. Press the uHarvest network and it will ask you for a password. The initial password is uHarvest, all lowercase. This can be changed later if desired. Once connected, there will be a blue check mark next to the uHarvest network. We are now connected to the uHarvest Wi-Fi and ready to proceed. UHarvest is an internet-based program. We are using an iPad for the demonstration, so we will use Safari. The internet browser may be different if using a different style tablet. So pull up your internet browser, and in the address bar, we want to use the following address. 192.168.100.254. Once we have entered that number, we can hit enter or go. Once uHarvest comes up on the screen, we want to add it to our home screen as an icon so we do not have the address bar on top and do not have to enter the address every time we want to use uHarvest. On an iPad, we can tap on the square with the arrow pointing straight up, which is located to the right of the address bar. Once we have hit the button, we can hit add to home screen button. You can rename it if you choose, but I will leave it as you harvest. This adds a tab on our home screen of the tablet, and you can use this icon to access uHarvest from now. Now you can click on the new uHarvest icon. Now it will ask you if you want to allow uHarvest to use your location. If you have a data plan on your tablet, you can choose allow and on your slingshot report, you will have a pin mark every time you unload, so you can choose allow if you want. If you do not have a data plan on your tablet, you can choose don't allow. The user agreement also has come up. We can hit the green box with an arrow in it to accept. We can also charge our tablet from the processor. You can plug in your charging cord into one of the USB ports on the processor. Once your tablet charging cord is hooked up, a trust this computer message will come up on the tablet. We want to click don't trust. It is very important we click don't trust. If we click trust, uHarvest will seem like it's working, but it will not save loads. So it's very important we click don't trust. You are now connected and ready to start setting up the uHarvest system. In the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you will see setup. Once you get into the setup menu, you can set up your truck, destinations, varieties, and also set up what cart you have. Click on change cart slash setup button. Now we can choose what make, model, and undercarriage of grain cart you have. For the demonstration, I will choose a Brent 1196 and on single float tires. You can also change the scale weight interval here. There are several different options here, but the lower the number means the scale will be more sensitive and the higher the number 
the scale will filter out some of that sensitivity. I will pick 50 pounds. You can also change between pounds and kilograms on this page. We will leave it in pounds for the demonstration. You can also check the load cell setup from this page to verify the numbers are correct. The gain value should be somewhere between 0.75 and 1.75 depending on the grain cart. I show 0.75 for this cart so we are okay. The count number shows 40,000. This is just a starting calibration number so the scale will need to be calibrated. Please see the U-Harvest operation video on how to calibrate. The capacity shows 61,600. This is okay for an 1,100 bushel cart. The total number of load cells shows five, and on this cart with single floater tires, we do have five load cells. So all the numbers are right for the cart we have chosen. If the grain cart is set up with AccuLoad, we can set up the numbers for that at the bottom of the page. Please refer to the operator's manual for setting up AccuLoad. You can also turn on manual load logging. U-Harvest does have a sensor on the drive shaft to tell the system when you are unloading and when you stop unloading to save a load. If something would happen to the sensor where it does not detect the PTO is running, the manual load logging will allow the operator to manually tell the system when the cart is unloading and when it is done unloading in order to record the load event until the sensor can be checked out. To enable manual load logging feature, just place a check mark in the box and an icon will appear on your unload page that will allow you to turn the recording on and off. For this demonstration, we will leave it off because we have a PTO sensor. We can now hit the green check mark because we are finished in the cart setup page. Then we can click OK if we are sure we want to change the cart setup. Now you can click on Database Manager Setup. Here is where you can add, edit, or delete truck, destinations, and varieties. If you want to add a truck, click on the top blue plus sign. A pop-up appears asking for the truck name. You can enter any information you need to, that best describes your truck, but it's best to use letters and numbers and not symbols. Once you type in the name of the truck, you can hit OK. One important note that if you're using AccuLoad, you must enter a capacity for the truck once you have added that truck. So just click on select a truck and go find the truck you just added and click on it. Now you can click in the capacity box and enter a capacity for the truck. Even if you're not running AccuLoad and would like to enter truck capacities, it will not hurt anything and the numbers will still show up and you are able to use them. If you want to enter a destination, click on the middle blue plus sign. A pop-up appears asking for the destination name. Again, you can enter any information you need to to describe your destinations, but it's best to use letters and numbers and not symbols. Once you type in the name of the destination, you can hit OK. If you want to add a variety, click on the bottom blue plus sign. A pop-up appears asking the variety name. You can enter any information you need to best describe your varieties, but again, it's best to use letters and numbers and not symbols. Once you type in the name of the variety, you can hit OK. Once you have entered all your trucks, truck capacities, destinations, and varieties, you can click on the green check mark at the bottom right to exit. You can also change the time on the system depending on which time zone you're in. Since we're in Ohio and are in the Eastern time zone, I will choose Eastern time, US and Canada. You can also calibrate the scale weight and moisture sensor from the setup page. Please see the U-Harvest operation video on how to calibrate the scale weight and moisture sensor. We are now done with this portion of the setup and can click on the house in the upper right hand corner to go back to the home screen. We can now enter our growers, farms, and fields. You can click on the blue plus sign on the left side of the screen where it says new job. Once you click on that, it brings us to a new page where we can enter growers, farms, and fields. 
The way the system works is that a tablet can have unlimited amount of growers, farms, and fields in any combination. But if you are planning on using a virtual terminal at any time, you will need to structure them so that there are no more than 30 growers, no more than 30 farms underneath one particular grower, and no more than 30 fields underneath one particular farm. So to add a grower, click on the top blue plus sign. A pop-up appears asking for the grower name. You can enter any information you need to describe your growers, but it's best to use letters and numbers and not symbols. Once you type in the name of the grower, you can hit OK. Now you can add a farm to that grower. Click on the plus sign next to the farm, and a pop-up appears asking for the farm name. Again, you can enter any information you need that best describes your farm, but it's best to use letters and numbers and not symbols. Once you type in the name of the farm, you can hit OK. Now you can add a field to that farm you just entered. Click on the blue plus sign with the field. A pop-up appears asking for the field name. Again, you can enter any information you need that best describes your fields, but it's best to use letters and numbers and not symbols. Once you type in the name of the field, you can hit OK. Once you have entered all your growers, farms, and fields, you can hit the red X to exit this screen. You are now set up to run uHarvest data management system from a tablet. If you would like to run uHarvest from a virtual terminal screen, please see the uHarvest VT setup video.